Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. A new feature that Leonardo AI has released is the transparency feature. And as you guys can see right here, if you turn it on, you can create some transparent images. Now it's obvious that we all do pretty much print on demand. And uh, when we create different t-shirt designs, poster designs, things like that, we might potentially wanna create some transparent graphics. You know, in order for us to place the graphic on the t-shirt properly, make it look decent, it has to have a transparent feature to it uh, so that it could be, you know, a good composition. With that being said, let's go ahead and test this today on Leonardo AI. I'm going to be testing their new transparent feature. It's in beta currently, so it's tough to say whether it's perfected. I'm sure they're going to keep working on it and improving things, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a regular output without the transparency feature. And I'm actually going to try this with Photoreal. One of the reasons that I also am very interested in this feature as well as print on demand is selling photography, AI photography, or stock photography. And um, things typically sell a little bit better when they're transparent. Not always, but sometimes, especially depending on the image. So let's go ahead and give it a shot here. So I'm gonna write a white bowl of blueberries. Very, very simple prompt. They actually recommend that if you want a transparent background, it's better to have a shorter prompt. So I'm gonna go over here, configure the sizing. Let's just use a typical width 512, height 512, so a perfect square. And once again, we're using Photoreal, we're keeping it on, and we're keeping Alchemy on, and we'll just see what it produces. After we get our production here, we're gonna take transparency, turn it on, and then see the effects as well. So we have two different versions. Effectively, everything's the same. The only difference is this output should be our transparent output. This output should be our non-transparent. So we should see other elements in the backgrounds. And I'm curious to see, like I said, what kind of outcome it will come with. With that being said, I also wanna try different graphics. So there we go, we got our first sh shot of images here using Photoreal. So a white bowl with blueberries, makes perfect sense. Okay, this as well, and this as well. And even we go to the first image, this does make sense. We got some raspberries here, but you know, nothing too bad. Everything looks in fact really good. Um, but once again, this is the non-transparent version. So what it's doing right now is it's creating literally the transparent version. A little FYI, something that I can do is I can go to this image and I can remove the background. However, it will not be transparent, right? So that won't make the image actually transparent. It might make this part black or something like that, but it won't actually remove the background. But it looks like our transparent ones are completed. Let's go ahead and take a look. So... This is clearly transparent. You have a little shadow of the blue right here. Okay, we have this image, which is a lot less transparent. We can see that there's transparency right here. This part is not completely transparent. Okay, um, and by the way, I also want you guys to pay attention to the bowl. The bowl is not a white color. Not really sure what that is. Maybe it's a stem of some sort. Uh, this is technically a white bowl with blueberries looks like it has some mint leaves here and it's slightly transparent not fully here there's some darkness some darkness here okay and this is almost seems like a full screen shot of some blueberries with a white bowl interesting so this was definitely the best output so far in the group i think overall if i really wanted to have something that was transparent. I would just take an image like this, you know, fuzzy select all around using like GIMP or something like that and just delete the entire background. But once again, this is for Photoreal. Let's go ahead and turn Photoreal off and let's create a sticker that has a transparent background. And something that I like to do is sometimes I like to look through the, um, uh, the uh, community feed, right? And sometimes stickers will emerge. So like this, for example, is an image of a sticker. I'll just go ahead and hit remix, super easy. And what it will do is we'll turn transparency on. We already know how the image looks, right? When it's not transparent, let's go ahead and hit generate. Now, once again, they do give a recommendation. Let's go ahead and read what it says. It says Leonardo Diffusion XL has mixed results 
with transparency toggled on. We recommend selecting a different model. Do not mention a background for better results with transparency toggled on. So occasionally, depending on what settings you set, there will be these warnings that emerge. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and give it a shot, give it a try and see what potentially can emerge. Sometimes it's you know, a good output, sometimes it isn't. We could also test different models. We don't have to use just Leonardo XL, but it actually looks like, you know, you know, oddly enough, this came out pretty good, right? So obviously this is not fully transparent. There's some some shadowing that not supposed to really exist. Here there is almost looks like a perfect output. Let's actually take this and let's hit download. And I'll upload this into a Canva canvas just to give it a test. I'll hit download on this too and hit download here and hit download here. Give me a second. I'll just head over to Canva. Okay, so what I did was I uploaded them all into Canva. Let's see now how they look. I'll change the canvas to this yellow, uh, this greenish color just so you guys can see how the transparency looks, right? And you could see actually it's it did a, did a really good job. I mean, for this image, this image is almost a perfect 10. I really can't, I can't give it any negative points here. It's fully transparent where it needs to be, which is a total win. Let's go ahead and remove it. Let's add this one. And this one, like I said, once again, just as I said earlier, that little shadowing right here, right here, a little bit here makes it a little bit less perfect. But still overall for this newer beta technology, especially when we had the warnings emerge, it's still pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and select this one, right? Let's make this larger. And this one looks as well as a perfect 10. I, I can't, you know, 10 out of 10 for me. I can't really see where it made any mistakes from the transparency concept. Um, you know, overall, I can't complain. It's really good. And then finally, we'll check out this last one here. This last one, it seems like the only issue with the transparency is this, this shadow here on the bottom. Um, but overall, like I said, you know, especially for a beta, you know, this is, this is pretty decent results. Let's go ahead and test this with uh, some other details and maybe switching up the model. So we just tested Leonardo Diffusion XL. Let's go ahead and test Leonardo Kino XL. Let's change this miniature dog here. Let's change this to a, um, let's change this. Let's, let's make this a little more simple like they ask. Uh, let's remove this, okay. Let's remove this mention about the background. We have here a miniature dog. I'll remove miniature. I'll just write German Shepherd, German Shepherd puppy, puppy. And we're gonna leave it just like that. We're gonna make sure transparency is on and we'll hit generate and see what output comes of it. Okay, so the results are in. We can see here an example of probably the best one is right here in my opinion uh this one looks really good too but not the best this one is okay not really perfect on the transparency marker because it does touch the uh, corners of the image which if i'm looking for a transparent image that's not ideal especially for a print on demand standpoint if i was selling this image from a stock photography standpoint i don't think it would really matter uh but you know, having the corners here attached um, or having the image attached to the corners is not ideal. Uh, this is okay, but the art is a little weak, the skill of the art. In fact, if I turn transparency on, I could almost bet that the art would be better. It would have better outputs. Uh, this is a good output. Uh, I'll go ahead and download this and I can upload it, like I said, right here into Canva. And I could, if I really wanted to, I could uh, upscale this, I could, you know, turn it into a t-shirt design, maybe even remove the border. There's a lot of different things that I potentially can do here, but you could see how it is fully transparent. I'm moving it around and there's nowhere, you know, does it really overlap too much. Maybe a little bit right here, but it's still a transparent image. It's kind of interesting to see where this technology is going. It's definitely getting more effective and um, hey, 
it's not that bad. These are, these are the outputs right here without the transparency marker. I feel like this one is really good. This one is good. Actually, really good. Um, this one is pretty good as well. Now, obviously, I'd have to sit there and do more work to it. I have to clean it up and do a lot of erasing, but it's still good. Um, there's, like I said, a lot of different features, and I can test this with all kinds of different models. In fact, if I turn transparency on and we turn it to, for example, Leonardo Vision, let's hit that. Let's turn that on. We have, um, let's see if this can work on different, different, um, uh, models that are outside the Alchemy 2 range. So, Absolute Reality 1.6. Let's turn it to Dream Shaper version 7. Let's hit Generate, making sure transparency on. And once again, these are models that are not on Alchemy V2. So the difference between the models that are on that are not on Alchemy V2 versus the ones that are is these are a little bit more advanced. They use Stable Diffusion 2.0, which is essentially the Excel version of Leonardo. So whenever you see an Excel here, it's using Stable Diffusion 2.0. Uh, so let's see. Um, this is Leonardo Diffusion Excel. The results, I would say, seem a little bit better, for sure. Um, not so perfect on the feet here and the tail. It's a little bit of a mistake here, but not too noticeable. This one is a lot more noticeable. This one's pretty good as well. It would take some erasing. I would erase here, 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 maybe all this text down here. But, you know, overall, not too bad. Is it comparable to the Le uh, Leonardo Kino XL? Maybe. Uh, this one is interesting. Absolute Reality 1.6, definitely a lot more intricate. Um, I could see it definitely working for certain groups of creators. I mean, if this is your art style, you might like this, but it's definitely not bad. Uh, here we have another art style. Once again, this is with Dream Shaper V7. Not too bad as well, but not fully transparent. We can see here on the corners, there is some shadowing, some colors. This one is just all messed up. Uh, but like I said, there's a whole lot of different options here uh, with this. And we could test different models. We test different, you know, settings here. There's a lot of things we can do. You know, with Alchemy, for example, I could turn it to version 3 beta. I'll hit save. Make sure transparency is on. Hit generate. We can generate all kinds of crazy outputs and different looks to different things. And just out of curiosity, I want to see and wait here what this will produce with, you know, version, did I even turn version 3 on? I'm not even sure. Um, can this be turned on with version 3? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. So pr just a little info for you guys. Prompt Magic version 3 cannot be on with transparency beta. I thought it can, uh, but clearly it cannot. So that is a little thing to note right there. But you know, honestly, not too bad. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully this video helped you out, gave you some information on how to use Leonardo Transparency. Overall, from my review, I think this is great. Uh, great news that they keep developing their platform. It's nice to see that there's a platform out here constantly developing, constantly improving, always working to get better. But um, I think, you know, especially in a few months, this thing is going to be very, very powerful uh, with the kind of transparent designs it can make. And I, honestly, it just reduces an extra step for us creators. You know, if I was to take an image like this, make it transparent, add some text, put it on a t-shirt, like I said, it only saves me a few minutes, saving me an extra step. So, you know, it helps when you're doing 20, 30, 100 different designs a day, and especially you're doing other projects. So definitely a benefit for me. You guys let me know what you think of this. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching, and peace out. Bye.